Hi there folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. Today we're going to be out here with the the boat I called fat fishing. And that P-H-A-T means pretty hot and tempting or poor, horrible at things. I don't know. Fat fishing. Um, just a play on words, right? I've got a good one for you today. We got to get this boat back on the water. It's been in storage since last fall. It hasn't been fired up. It's got the 120 Mer Cruiser. And it's also got a long shaft, gotten kind of dirty on the outside. Johnson 99 long shaft on my garlic trolling motor hanger, kicker motor hanger. Uh, there's several things, whoa, no. I haven't been drinking. Wish I was though, sort of, kinda. I've got two dead batteries that I had in here. I took out last fall, checked them, the trolling motor batteries. There's two 24 volt, two 12 volt that I got hooked up in series to make 24 volt to run my Altera. We'll cover that Altera trolling motor as well. Some of the features I like about it. At the end of this video, you will have seen me on the water. You will see me fire this up, fire this up. You see me on the water doing things just to get, they gotta get this boat wet. You know, the aluminum, it'll start to dry out and crack. Oh wait, nope, that's wooden boats. Aluminum's fine. But I wanna get it on the water. I haven't, haven't been on the water this year yet, and it's mid-July. Or by the time you see this video, a couple hours past mid-July. So, but there's a couple things I, I wanna show you that I did wrong. And I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. And one of those wrong things is how I wired up my trolling motor. I wired it up correctly, but the circuit breaker I used was not the right circuit breaker. And I'll tell you why. I went to, let's just call it the local big box store. It's called Menards around here. You guys might have them, Lowe's, Home Depot. They're all across the country. And I bought home, a home breaker mount and a home breaker. <laughs> yeah, you guys are laughing at me now, but you know, it was reasonably priced and I needed to get this on the water and I wanted to have a breaker that I could protect my trolling motor in my system. So I put a home breaker on it, okay? Fine. What'd I do? I put a 30 amp around there thinking, oh, that's enough. Well, it was enough for my old trolling motor. Uh, it didn't draw the amps that this Altera will draw. And a 30 amp breaker, when I run it up at eight, I can run it up on eight a lot. I go nine or 10, if I go to 10, I can go about 100 yards, and I'm trolling along, I hear a click underneath the uh, seat where I sit for casting. And uh, it'll trip that breaker. So sometimes I can't troll as fast as I want to or do what I want to with the trolling motor. So I've got some 40 amp waterproof marine grade breakers that are designed to be used as on off switches. We're gonna cover more of that here in a minute. Let's get the front cover pulled back. Let's get the casting deck pulled off so I can get access to my stuff. Now you guys are gonna laugh at me on the batteries I bought. And I don't blame you. You can give, you can comment and leave me some negatory comments. I don't blame you. Batteries are expensive. And I bought two 12 volt F as in Frank, V as in Victor, P as in Paul, FVP batteries from the local big box store, hardware store, $104 a piece, okay? And they're so proud of them, they didn't even put the amp hours on there. So part of this is gonna be a little bit of review of that particular battery. We'll see how Frank Victor Paul holds up to the fat fishing boat and its Altera trolling motor. And uh, I'm gonna run them and I'm gonna burn them up and see how, not burn them up, but I'm gonna see how long they'll troll for what they are. My ultimate goal is to put in a, let's just say the name starts with Dakota, or rhymes with Dakota. Yeah, it's Dakota. They make a rechargeable battery, marine battery, and I wanna get one of those. But I gotta write a check out for about $1,000 to do that. And uh, I probably will, because I want to see what cheap does for me performance-wise, and I want to see what 
make it rain money does for me. The, uh, the Dakota battery I'm wanting to buy, I reached out to them and I'm asking them if they wanted to sponsor, but I haven't heard back yet. Maybe I will by the time this end of this video happens, but I, uh, it's a 24 volt single battery, 24 volt, 60 amp hour. Right at a thousand bucks, it's a thousand doll hairs. And the difference between it and the lead acid is tremendous. It's worth the extra money if it does everything it says it'll do. Your lead acid batteries will do 300 to 500 cycles. If you don't know what that is, 300 to 500 times you can discharge it and recharge it. The Deep Cycle Marine battery from Dakota, and there'll be more description coming from that when I have it in my paws, is we'll do 3,000 to 5,000 cycles. Let that soak in for a second. That's 10, that's this many plus this many, times more life. So even if I look at the cheapest batteries that I bought, $200 total, $208 plus tax, and I get 11% mail-in rebate. So let's just call it 200 even. Times 10 is $2,000. So the nice thing, if this other one does last 10 times longer, now that's some easy math, it's gonna cost me half as much in the long term. Just if it does the cycles it says it'll do. It also, also, wrap your brains around this one. Bill! Dozing off over there. Like I said, live audience. What's the plural for, audi for more people than one person in audience? Because I have an audience, so I, I don't have audiences. So, 10 times. $2,000 was what it cost for these FP, FVPs to get as many cycles out of it. It cost me $2,000 and I'd have to buy the batteries 10 times to get the same cycles. The Dakota will have 11 year warranty. The FVP, one year. Now just some loose math Carry the pie, throw out the milk, check the expiration date, 11 times, 11 times more warranty. Half the cost in the long run, 11% more warranty. No, 11, 11 times the warranty. So, and this is tough, this is tough. Cause yeah, most people have the $200 and they'll go buy those $200 and get those batteries in there like I did. Or, this is the tough one to invest. What are we in here for folks? We're not in here for the short game. I know business and finance and everything's for the short gain, short term opportunities, big gains and all that. Sometimes you got to play the long game. The batteries that I had in there were good quality batteries. My original trolling motor did, I know I'm talking a lot, but this is educational. I'm trying to fill your head with knowledge. I'm trying to get this stuff that's in here through that camera lens and into your head so you can make educated and good decisions on your stuff. I need a truck. Um, so what am I saying? Most people will spend $200 five times, but it's hard to get somebody to spend $1,000 one time. But if you look at the, all the value and all you're going to get out of it and everything you're supposed to do and, and you know, everything is supposed to happen, the thousand dollars is the cheaper option. In the long run, this $200 I spent for batteries will have only cost me one-tenth in the long run. Does that make sense? 
wrap your head around it. Leave your comments down below. But anyway, we're going to pull this cover back. We're going to pull the casting deck off and get started on this. And I'm going to show you. these and yes walking out to do this video I dropped one where'd it go and I and it these are like a phenolic these are the things your household breakers are made out of it's very hard very brittle plastic and it's brittle for a reason it's tough but doesn't take a lot of shock but will protect your electrical circuits from and sparks from getting outside of it when it trips so I dropped it and I cracked it. And the piece went in there and it quit working like it should. And I'm kind of disappointed in myself for dropping it. Well, it was drop this or drop the camera, so I dropped this. But I'm going to bring you in close and show you what these look like. And there'll be links in the description below for everything I've got in this video that I think is pertinent. And that you may use and use get discounts. Now, if you use the links that go to Amazon, much appreciated. You can go buy you a couple of these off Amazon at a reasonable price. And then shop so your wife don't get mad. Shop for something for her on Amazon and buy that too, whatever it is. The cool part is once you use my link to get to Amazon, it will act like your normal, everything's going fine and you get your, you get your uh, if you're using your Amazon store card and whatnot, you'll get your, uh rebate incentive or amazon bucks or whatever it is that you could use towards your next purchase that doesn't change any of that but it will offer me up a three percent commission now you buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff i get three dollars it's not that much it doesn't cost you anything but because i sent you to amazon they're willing to reward me with three dollars for every hundred dollars you spend you know one percent okay 3%, no, 3%, I'm sorry, 3%. Numbers are hard, but enough of that. Appreciate it. If you like my videos, you like my channel, don't be afraid to reach down below there and click that little thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll continue to bring you videos as much as we can. And this is a boat video. Um, from what I'm seeing with my other videos that aren't boat related, you guys have to like this one. You have to watch it. You have to like it because that's what you want. I'm listening to the people, but like I said in my previous other videos, I do videos that aren't... Let's just get over here. Get over here. Now what these are, these are actually waterproof breakers. Now your breakers, your household breakers, aren't designed to be used as on-off switches. It will wear them out prematurely. These are actually designed to be waterproof. They're designed for marine use. And is this the broken one? Nope, this is the good one. This is the one broke. Look at that chunk missing out of there. I think I got the piece to fall out, but it's gonna let water in, so I screwed the pooch on that one. But yeah, they're designed to you're engaged. These are 40 ampers. Push the button and disengages. The reason that's so important is on my old Terra Trolla motor, you need to be able to engage it to use it. But when you go to charge your batteries up, disengaged so none of the back feet of any of the batteries or the charger gets back to your trolling motor and the delicate circuitry that's in there that makes all the electronics work like they should let's get the cover off this boat now what you may notice on this cover is i don't have the little but yellow jacket if i get stung by one more wasp this spring anyway i don't have this on here because this boat has been sitting in a shed and the cover is designed just to keep the dirt out. It's filthy on top there. But this is an Empire cover cover that I buy. These are really good. These have serious, serious cordage in here. Don't get it around your neck. Won't, won't end well. Hello, waspy wasp. Get out of my boat. I'm coming in. If you guys have been following me for a minute, you'll know that my batteries, I realized my batteries were toast when I was 50 miles down river on the Mississippi on the other side of a 1200 foot lock when I ran upon a sandbar. You can go search my videos for that one. That's, that's a good one. I think it's a good one. All right, now I gotta, I gotta get my body up in here. 
Hello, wasp. Seems to be pretty clear. All right. There's still some Mississippi mud up here. Oh. First step, get a strong back. Oh my goodness. Now as I uncover stuff and move stuff around, I like to look for evidence of uh, mice. And then they've been chewing on me wires or not. Need a taller ladder. There's the only a lot. Okay, here they are. The FVP, distributed by FMP out of Egan, Minnesota. It's a lead acid. They're not very forthcoming with the amp hours. It's got 680 cold cranking amps, 850 MCAs, 170 RC. I think the 170 RC is reserve capacity. It's an M27-7DC. I gotta do a little more research to learn a little more about these batteries. Yeah, that's how you say it, battery. Battery. The E is silent. B-A-T-T-R-Y. Battery. Now I know there's some of you that like lead kind. That's not how you say battery. You do if the E is silent. Don't worry about how I speak. Learn about, listen to the knowledge I'm trying to put into your head. I'm not very smart, but I try hard. So well, this is what we bought. This, this represents 200-ish dollars. I weighed one with my deer scale. 59 pounds a piece. Now they claim the other battery I'm looking at weighs less than half. I don't know whether it's claiming less than half of one of these or less than half of two of these. Either way, it's a win because it's got 24 volts in one battery, or as we say on the ranch here, backyard marina, the battery. It's supposed to weigh less than half. So right now we're putting 118 pounds. Mm, medium sized person on the nose of this boat. Now this boat can handle us, an 18 foot Starcraft. Plenty of horsepower, plenty of everything. I can put five people in this, grown people in this boat and push the throttle down and it still hits 31 miles an hour top speed. It's got the cojones to push it. So I'm not worried about weight, but then am I? Yeah, if I can, if I can reduce my battery capacity, increase everything by 10 and 11 times and cut my weight in half, I call that winning all the way around. So let's stick these in. I'm gonna get you in my boat here, show you what I do when I take it out for the winter because I usually put all my batteries on a charger, a maintainer for the winter. Now I do buy decent quality battery chargers to put in my boat, but the battery I'm getting ready to buy or possibly be sponsored by, doubt they'll do it, I'm not a big enough channel for that yet, but we're getting there. Uh, comes with its own special charger for its own special battery. I like that. That's part of the money you spend, so that's not a bad deal. These I have to buy and then had to buy a charger to maintain it. But I buy a battery charger that will charge the 24 volt system. And it also does the balancing thing and all that kind of fun stuff. The other one I have in the banana it's called Genius, and I like that one a lot. It's a two bank charger. It maintains both batteries individually and brings them up and around. It has plate scrubbing technology and keeps the thing alive a lot longer. Now my old trolling motor would burn it down. I, that's my old batteries. They were, they were $150 a piece. They were $300 worth of batteries. They, they lasted three years. Even when I burned them down, I call them burning them down because I had a trolling motor that wasn't as smart as this one. 
and it would just run and run. <laughs> and I looked at my volts and realized I was down to eight volts. They're not designed to go down that low. You're not supposed to get that deep into the deep cycle. So I recharged them. Took two and a half days to bring them back up to normal. They worked fine for about a year and a half with this trolling motor. This boat trolling motor protected them because once it gets down low enough voltage wise, it says, uh uh, we can't go any lower than this. I, I need to just stop you doing what you're doing. It'll, it'll actually stop trolling. It'll stop cruise controlling. It can't, it won't do a, tr it won't, uh, cruise control, it won't turn left, right. It won't do a lot of things. Only thing it'll let you do is stow it, put it back in its home position. And that's telling you, you're good enough. Don't run it anymore. So I like this, I like this uh, Altera, Altera by Minn Kota a lot. I know people say not fantastic things about it, but I like it. It's done me no wrong. I'm gonna, Oh, mercy, there goes it, there goes it. Oh, oh. Good Lord. It would be nice if these weighed half as much. All right, and I only had to deal with one of them. Come on, get in there. Good Lord Almighty. That's heavy. Okay, let's get you in the boat. Now, I like to make life easy on myself by labeling my wires. Cause this looks like quite the mess, but overall when it's all said and done, it's really not, not. And what I do is I put a zip tie through all my wires so I know what goes on what terminal. So this says right front, this says uh, something else, left, front, negative, right, front, positive, and all the associated wires that go with it, the way I have this thing rigged up. Now some of you might laugh at it, but all this wiring is under the casting deck. Oh, give me my box of rags, please. So before we put the new batteries in here, we're gonna go ahead and clean up my battery tray. Now this is just a plastic battery tray I made out of starboard, so my batteries don't wiggle around. And then I got my handy dandy cinch strap to lock them in. So we're gonna use a little bit of my simple green. Just get after wiping this down before I put the batteries in here. Got to start off clean. I might end up dirty by the end of the season, but start off clean. It's not that hard. A little bit of old battery juice working on my screws there. Let go. There we go. Let's just wipe it down. There's advantages to the starboard half inch flooring I put down in this boat. But, mind you, there's plenty of disadvantages as well. One of them would be temperature. In the direct sunlight, this floor will get hot. If I had it to do over again, I'd put a plywood floor in it again. Plywood, original plywood floor only lasted 40 years. Why did I think I needed to improve on that? I know we're losing our daylight pretty quick here. Now, since I like to leave these plastic caps on the terminals I'm not using, I gotta find this one. And I also like to use wing nuts. Now we can put the wiring harness back in place. Now what you're gonna see here is I got this, uh, let's see, I might get it twisted around right, wrong, right, I'm different. I've got this so it goes on here negative to positive or positive to negative, and then I pull all my voltage off of this side. That's where I get my 24 volts from, hooking these up in series. So the, everything under this zip tie is right front. So I'll go ahead and cut it. And I can put my washer on, and we'll wing nut it. And I haven't tightened everything down yet, I'll tighten it down. This is left front, which is negatory, says it right on it. And we'll squeeze that one right in there, just like that. You know, would you believe it? I put it on upside down. Let's fix that. <laughs> A 
lays down flatter this way. I got my breakers turned off right now. All that's left is this side. Easy peasy, right? So right here in this zip tie loopy de loop, I got left rear positive. There's left rear positive, right? All right. This makes it so easy when you do it right. Because if you did, if you pulled this off last year and then tried to figure it out this year, you're gonna spend a few minutes scratching your head. Because I don't care how good your memory is, six months later, when you pull all this off and try to put it in the right post, good luck. There we go. Last one we got is this negatory one right here. Everything on this one goes on the right rear, which is negative. And just like that, you're all hooked up. Pretty easy peasy. Now my duck, casting duck, like I said, covers this and I put some life jackets in here. So most of this wiring is pretty well protected. It's not gonna get banged up by anything. I just thought about something I'll share with you here in a little bit after I think about it for a minute longer. Alrighty, we got some serious low light conditions going on here, but you can see here that I, what I've got running my trolling motor as a breaker is two square D QO home breakers on a little piece I took out of a panel to hook it up. We're going to replace these wires going to my new breakers one of which i need to re buy new so we'll be back out of here back out here uh probably working on the back end of the boat first now until my breakers show up so we'll jump back there we're going to test run the motor we're going to put the battery in test motor run the motor the trim and just see what all is still working and we'll look the wiring over for mice chews cotton picking mice well as luck and fast survey fast service delivery would have it I have the replacement breaker so I can go ahead and take this apart so the way I've got this on this home breaker as you can see here pretty straightforward let go I had this and this hooked together and I had that this red and red hooked together that's the way this thing's set up So first things first, to keep everything connected the way it was, I'm going to have to put a connection on here. Hopefully I got, I've only got two, so I'm going to have to stop by the Hardmore store and pick up some more of these. And I really like these things, I think I showed you earlier, you know, on, off. They're designed to be on off switches and they also operate as breakers. I'm gonna search my shop to see if I can find two more yellows. So that would turn it on, that would turn it off. Now some of you might be asking the question, Michael, why do you put a breaker on both the negative and the positive? And I'm going to tell you why. When I'm charging the batteries up and I've got this battery maintainer hooked up to the batteries, I want to make sure that all the connection, this goes directly to my trolling motor. And I want to make sure the circuit is broke on both sides. I don't want any back feed, any risk of rearing my trolling motor whatsoever. So I found it, I'd call it necessary to be able to disconnect both just like that. Now we're gonna see if it works. So far when I turned it on, no snap, crackle, pop, that's good. 
First thing we'll do is we hit the power button. Beep, 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 green light's on. Then I'll go here to mode. Mode's on. You hit this twice and it should deploy. We can raise it up. We can put it down. We can go left and right. We can power on constant. Pedal control for on off. All the way up to 10, down to zero. Everything seems to be working just fine and dandy. All right. I'm gonna stow it, one, one punch to stow. Timber! All right, so far everything seems to be working just fine. Battery connections are all good. Excellent, excellent deal. So we're gonna go ahead and power it off with this button, which shuts the pedal off. We'll stick that back away and we're gonna, we're gonna disconnect. We'll go ahead and disconnect. Now somebody, some of you might be asking why I put it in this, this direction because when I have the casting deck sitting over the top of this, I can reach in and push the button, and all I gotta do is I, I know I just gotta push these down. So it's easy enough for me to reach through, push down. It's easy enough for me to reach through, disconnect before I plug in my charger. Now some of you might ask, where do you plug your charger in at? I've got it right here. It's just sitting right there, so anytime I'm plug, plugged in, I can come in, bring a drop cord up to the front of the boat, and plug it in after I powered it off fired off the uh, or disconnected the batteries anyway I can still charge the batteries with 110 well that concludes this portion of the boat the front end is now complete I just got to put the casting deck back in and we're good to go well I'm gonna start off here with by saying doggone it you know I'd put all this back together with some nice aircraft grade everything all this stuff so she wouldn't leak and she didn't leak all the stuff I put on there didn't leak I missed one thing. I fired this thing up for the season just to see how everything was looking, smelling, and feeling. And it's slinging water. I'm like, no. Come to find out this bolt that's on the alternator bracket here is a through hole to the water jacket. And when I pulled it, put it back, I didn't notice that when I put it back together. And she leaks water, slings water everywhere. That's the only leak I got, the only problem I got. So I've got to take looks like a few things apart and uh we'll get that fixed get that bolt out get some sealing on it and put it back in we'll let it set up and then we'll test again and i think we'll be okay got my handy dandy tool kit right here where you can't see it and i can't reach it there we go Might be asking yourself, why am I pulling off the, the pulley? Because <laughs> it gains access to this bolt a heck of a lot easier. All right, I've got this here. Uh, it's called Gear Oil RTV Gasket Maker. Pretty good stuff. Um, gonna get the last use out of it because the old, uh, it's clogged. So we're gonna make a small incision. And we're gonna get some out here. And what I'm gonna do, this spills good and thick. I just wanna pack it in that hole pretty good. I'm gonna cover the bolt pretty good. I think that'll seal her right up. And why I don't use, you know, a guy could use JB Weld. I wouldn't recommend it. I love JB Weld, but there may become a time when I want to take this back apart. 
and uh, this will allow me to do that. I'm pretty confident this is going to seal it right up. I'll bring that up kind of snug. Gets us going. Got to get my pulley back on. Well, we got it all back together there. That seems like that's going to work pretty good. Last fall, I bought me some new hardware. I bought some nice grade five coated bolts because the bolts that are currently in my boat that hold the, the bracket down, the engine mount down, are two different bolts. And that just, that just didn't set well with me. Wow, I'm knocking everything over, knock it out. Okay. All right, the good news is we got the bolt in there installed. It has now been several hours later. The stuff is cured. I have put the water back to it, fired the boat up, no leaks. That's the good news. The other good news is the boat's ready to hit the water right now as is where it sits. I do have one more little tweak. I'm not going out till next weekend and I'm ordering some stuff that I hope will be here in time and give me time to work on it and do it before next weekend. But we're gonna do a little, that'll be a whole nother video, but it's gonna be a surprise. Uh, it's more cosmetic, but it is functional. If you, as you guys know, I put a starboard floor in this boat and as all boats, the floor gets really hot. So I'm gonna try something else. I put several different types of carpet in here. I've got something else I wanna try, and if it works out well, I'll be sharing it with you. Well, folks, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative and helpful. All I got left to do is vacuum this boat out, put the casting deck back in, and we're ready to go. Stay tuned for another upcoming video. We're gonna go into a deeper dive with these batteries I spoke to at the beginning of the video. I'm in currently in the middle of a test right now. Once I get the results, that'll be a video coming out to you very shortly on battery, battery types, and my trolling motor and how well they function together. Uh, guys, I hope you found this. And gals, I see there's 7%, 7.2% of my audience is female, according to the anal uh, analytics that uh, YouTube has. So ladies, appreciate you too. Don't want to leave you out. I'm hoping this is helping everybody and everything I do, I try to do to educate some people, give people a chance to do things on their own, not be afraid to dive in. Cause if I can do it, I hit my mic. Sorry about that. If I can do it, most people can do it. Uh, I, I know reading instructions is terrible. I hate reading instructions and trying to do something, but I can watch a video and go, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. That's not a problem. And you can go back and watch it, stop it. You know, I actually go back, I'll be honest. I go back in and watch my own videos. Sometimes when I go back and say, hey, I did that about two years ago. Let's see how I did it. Because I, what I try to do is I do watch other people's videos a lot. I like and subscribe. And don't you forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But I watch a lot of other people's videos. I like and subscribe. And I take the best of their videos. I might watch five or six different people do the same task I'm getting ready to do. And then I'll try to get the best of all those worlds, wrap them up and give you guys a hybrid version of that, what I'm doing. So you can have, there again, another reference point and possibly one of the better videos to, to do what you're planning on doing. Whether it's a boat, car, trailer, housework, anything like that, anything. That's why my, my videos, I have a variety of stuff out there uh i know i get every time this is funny you guys might you may may not you might not even be here right now you might not be watching till the end but it's interesting when i put out a gun video or a car video working on my car working on my jeep transmission stuff i will always lose one or two subscribers 
you go and look at this. It tells me when what videos are generating subscribers, and I'll always leave it. But even though I'm losing subscribers doing that, I'm going to continue to do it because there's the one or two or ten of you, or sometimes several hundred of you that watch those videos that aren't necessarily boat related, and you're getting some information, and you leave comments that says thank you, appreciate it. Now I have confidence doing this myself. Those comments are so awesome. I appreciate you guys out there for leaving those. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to drop a comment. I try to answer as many comments as I can, whether it's a thanks for watching or yeah, me too, or I had the same experience and maybe elaborate a little more. It's just fun to do. I love, I love interacting with people and uh, we're gonna keep doing what we're doing here on the old backyard marina. You guys get out there and have some fun. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, Charlie over there got it in my live audience. That's Charlie the squirrel. But ain't broke, fix it till it is. See you on the next video. Stay stay cool. Because it's like yesterday it was 97. Today it's like 76, 80. But, uh, but the sun ain't out. That's that's awesome. <laughs>